Geneva's first Catholic church, St. Francis de Sales, was founded in 1832 on Exchange Street. The cemetery land was purchased by the church in the 1840s. The first wave of Catholic immigrants were Irish in the mid-1800s, followed by Italians in the late 1800s. In 1960, the new public housing apartments on Preemption Street were named in memory of John J. Charters. He grew up in Geneva and graduated from Hobart in 1904. After becoming an attorney, he worked for the New York State Comptroller's Office as an auditor and was a financial consultant to Geneva City Government. Daughter Frances was a William Smith Jr. when she died at home after a brief illness. Many Genevans remember Kelty's dry goods store on Seneca Street. Michael Kelty moved here from Brooklyn in 1903 and bought the O'Brien and Howard store. After his death in 1920, Mrs. Curran bought the store, which remained in business until 1981. There are several grave markers that aren't traditional stones. Rosina Urbano's marker is concrete with a metal plaque. Carmela Valeria's marker is cement or fine concrete with the letters stamped while it was wet. Carmine Chalenza has a metal cross and plaque. None of these people had obituaries in the paper, but their families remembered them with what they could afford. Palma Perry and her son Frank died two days apart during the 1918 flu pandemic's worst month in Geneva. His cause of death was influenza, and she may have died from it as well. Frank was survived by his wife and two children. Johnny Snowney lived with his family on Middle Street across from the Geneva Wagon Works. He was playing near the factory when an old barn was being demolished. A worker had seen the boy around the barn, but was on the opposite side of the building when one of the walls came down and fell on Johnny. Franco Panetta was found dead at the Empire Gas and Electric Company in Border City. He was working alone cleaning a water filter when he may have fainted or had a seizure. His fellow workers found him lying face down in a shallow pool of water. Ceramic photos were invented in 1854 by two French photographers. The process caught on throughout Eastern and Southern Europe and Latin America. American companies were making gravestone photo plaques by the 1890s. Philomena Marchanese was nine years old when the car in which she was riding went off the preemption road into a ditch, about a mile and a half north of the experiment station. Philomena was thrown from the car. According to the Geneva Daily Times, Dominic Tarquin, 47, of Geneva, was killed Sunday afternoon when the car in which he and his three sons were riding was struck by a New York Central train near Geneva. The sons were injured. Louis de Tullio's obituary read, Louis de Tullio, 65, of 45 North Street, fell dead on the sidewalk in front of St. Francis de Sales Church yesterday morning on his way to attend the 9 o'clock Mass in that church. For many years, Lorenzo Bushlack and his family had the Sunny Fruit Store. A 1911 Geneva Daily Times article mentions that he owned the new building at the corner of Elm and Castle Streets. After his death, the family ran the store until 1976. Lorenzo Bushlack was also in the fruit business and went by Joseph, probably to avoid confusion with the other Lorenzo. His son William worked with him and died after a four-month illness. Joseph died eight hours after William, possibly due to shock. Josephine Damick and Dominic Tucheri, both 19, were engaged to marry in June. In early January, their car collided with a Greyhound bus at 1.30 a.m. between Waterloo and Border City. Josephine died instantly. Dominic went to the hospital but didn't regain consciousness. After a joint funeral mass at St. Francis, they were buried together. Alexander Pronti came to Geneva from Italy around 1900. After working for the Lehigh Valley Railroad, he opened his own restaurant on Avenue E. The family continued to run Pronti's for many years after his death. In March 1943, Angelo Pronti died at the age of 28 
after only a month on his new job as brakeman on the Lehigh Valley Railroad. He struck a post while climbing down a boxcar while the train was moving. Danny Ketchai was a well-known insurance and real estate agent. For several years, his wife Rose ran a grocery store from their home on North Street. Their son Morris was an attorney and the first Italian-American district attorney of Ontario County. William J. Devaney was a policeman from 1908 to 1929, working the night shift the entire time. Before then, he worked at the Old Standard Optical Company in downtown Geneva. After he left the police department, Mr. Devaney joined Chiron Optical Company and worked in the lens department until 1953. In 1904, at the age of 17, Lou McGuigan joined the Nestor Hose Fire Company as a bunker or someone who lived in the firehouse. Twenty years later, he was chosen as the first career fire chief. There were rivalries between the city's three volunteer companies, but over the 34 years as chief, he got them to work as one unit. Donald Neinstein was a graduate of DeSales High School in Geneva and was a high school teacher in the area for 35 years. He served on the Geneva City Council and the Ontario County Board of Supervisors. He loved circuses and was responsible for bringing them to Geneva. Sullivan Foligno's name doesn't appear in any list of the World War I dead, nor on the marker in Pulteney Park. Sullivan Flynn appeared in these places, but there were no Flynns fitting their description anywhere in Geneva. Sullivan Foligno's gravestone is the only place his service is honored. James Guinan owned a grocery store and an auto repair garage on the corner of Exchange and North Streets. He was alone in his garage at 2 North Exchange at 9 p.m. when three young men with guns demanded his money. As the robbers left, they shot him in the stomach and he died a day later. Thomas McNerney considered himself a blacksmith who was a policeman for several years in the early 1900s. His brother Jerry became chief of police but Thomas shooed horses until past the age of 80 and didn't retire from blacksmithing until the age of 84. Patrick O'Malley was in the trucking business most of his life, moving freight to and from railroad stations for customers. He was a prominent Genevan and served as mayor for one term in 1910 and 1911. Mm -hmm.